Oh, yeah. I mean, it, it honestly, it probably helped because, I mean, back in the day, our Pop Warner coach, he was an O lineman at some big North school. I can't even remember. And he was like teaching us Rip and, and Lou calls. And I was like, dude, I don't know who, know who Rip or Lou is, but. <laughs> So I woke up on the ambulance and- Oh man. Yeah, so I, I lost my spleen. I think that's kind of where I met God that day. Like I was kind of doing my own thing and then boom, like I can tell you from now, nothing in my life has been the same ever since that day. Really? Hey, welcome back to another rep. I am so excited to introduce Ethan to you. You are gonna love it. He's been uh, he's been balling since he was a little boy. But first, hey, if you like this show, hit like, hit subscribe, share it with your people. But let's go get another rep. Let's go. Hey, good morning, Ethan Bullock. What's happening down there? You're in Orlando, Florida. Sunny Florida, as of not right now though. <laughs> hey, you know what? It's Florida. The clouds blow over. It rains a little bit and then they blow away. Sometimes yeah, they bring it, lightning. Never for too long, never for too long. Never for too long. Well, we're gonna get to it, but you were out at Oklahoma State. Sometimes yes, it rained out there. Sometimes they had tornadoes out there. Yeah, I didn't see much rain, but I saw a lot of snow and a, and a lot of craziness. <laughs> you know, warnings and all that. Hey man, welcome to another rep. This show is about uh, how people are repping life. And I love having young athletes on or old athletes, but you're a young athlete. I love having athletes on because uh, they understand what repping's all about, first of all. And you've been repping since, heck, when did you start repping? <laughs> you were Shoot, I think, I think I was throwing the football as early as I could pick it up. Is that right? I mean, it was baseball, basketball. I mean, I had older, I had uncles that were older than me that played baseball in Florida and just were big basketball sport guys. So, I mean, as soon as I could walk, I was on a field with some type of cleat or shoe on. Yeah, and that, that's so awesome. And before I started recording, you were like, man, I hope it stops raining because my tennis game's getting jacked up right now. Yeah, no, usually Saturday mornings, cardio tennis. I haven't been in like three weeks because it's rain. I so. love tennis. When I get down there, I'm going to play you in tennis. Or when you, if you ever come back up here to Nashville, we'll have to play. I love tennis. That's awesome. I was down in uh, – Bradenton, Florida. I was at IMG. You familiar with that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I was coaching some IPP international players guys. And, um, you know, they grew up playing soccer and tennis and everything, but football exactly. <laughs> and play any football. So we bring them to the camp and we teach them football and it's like a cram course for football, but they could school you in about 11 other different sports, but football. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, they're, I mean, it's crazy how athletic those guys are when they train for all those different sports that America just doesn't really put in the, in the front. Like, football. Oh, yeah. And, you know, like the NBA, those, those dudes in the NBA that come from Europe, they're, they're all soccer players, so they're like seven feet tall, and they play basketball and soccer, so their feet are phenomenal. You know? Yeah, they, they, they can move like crazy. There's the soccer or the tennis team at Oklahoma State. They're making a run for it right now. And I met a couple of those guys. And I mean, they're all business. They, Is that golf team out there at Okie State good still? Oh, I mean, they're, they're killer. I think last year they, they won women's and men's Big 12. So they, it's like no, no one has They've been rolling shot. deep, deep, deep for a long time out there. Yeah, I mean, when you practice at Carson Creek and then you go over to play $8, 18 holes somewhere, you know, you're probably, it's probably pretty easy. <laughs> you're pretty owned up. Well, let's go back. Let's let's uh, start when you were a little guy, because you're a big guy now. You're 6'4", 2 something, you know, 220 six, pounds. 6'4", 215. Yeah, yeah. So how did it all start? You said you grew up, you had a football in your hand when you were like four years old. So – I was big into baseball growing up. I was, I was destined to be in the MLB. That's what I told myself. Yeah. And, uh, my uncles played, uh, and I just grew up going to Florida games on the weekends, watching their double headers and stuff like that. So, I mean, I was, I was going to be a baseball player no matter what anyone told me. Yeah. Um, so football, I always loved football. I went to tailgates with my family and all that. And well, who was your team? Was it the Gators or was it the Knights Central? So, yeah, I mean, it switched so many times. Sometimes I was a Gator fan. Sometimes I was a Seminole fan. You just never knew. Yeah. Honestly, I used to just root against at who everyone was rooting for, just to be 
just <laughs> to be, yeah. So just to be opposite. It just depends on who was playing that weekend. Yeah. It didn't matter. Um, but yeah, my friends, I mean, anytime we went to the park growing up, it was football and I was all time quarterback every time. Really? Like, I didn't, I played Pop Warner a little bit and then I started playing in high school seriously. But growing up, it was all baseball and I just played football with my friends in the park. And then, so your first like organized football, were you like um, in Pop Warner, you were the quarterback, then you went to middle school, private school, what'd you do? So, so crazy thing, Pop Warner, uh, I wasn't good enough. They told me I wasn't good enough to be the quarterback, so they stuck me at center. They're like, oh, it's the next quarterback. I said, all right. So I'm, I'm in there in middle school playing center. And, and they're, I give you a good appreciation for O-line. Oh, yeah. I mean, it, it honestly, it probably helped because, I mean, back in the day, our Pop Warner coach, he was an O-lineman at some big North school. I can't even remember. And he was like teaching us Rip and, and Lou calls. And I was like, dude, I don't know who, know who Rip or Lou is, but. <laughs> um, yep. So I, I didn't even play quarterback in middle school, but I still was playing baseball very seriously. Um, like I remember missing football games on Saturdays for baseball tournaments. So it was more baseball than anything. But. When I got to high school, that's heresy, by the way, but we'll move on. <laughs> uh, when I got to high school, I had actually moved to a new school my sophomore year, and I was going there for baseball because it was a really good baseball school here. What in school Orange. was that? Uh, Orangewood Christian School. Okay. Yep, it's probably 10 minutes from my house, but it, it was a really good baseball school. A lot of guys I grew up playing travel baseball with were all going to Orangewood. It was kind of like the big plan. Yeah. Let's get all the guys that I played with together. We'll all go to Orangewood for a couple of years, sign and, and go on our way. Yeah. And I show up first week. I think I had gym seventh period and I'm, I'm throwing the football in the gym and I'm launching them, like just having fun. And the coach, the football coach, classic high school football coach comes up to me. He's like, you're new here, right? I said, yes, sir. He said, do you play football? I said, I mean, I can throw a football, but I don't really play football. He says, we got, we got practice next Monday. I think you should just come out and watch. You know, classic football coach. <laughs> and so I, I, I don't know whatever, whatever reason I did, and it was history from there. I didn't even play baseball that next spring or anything. Really? I, had, I came out Monday. I tried out for the team. I made it. And I had a really good sophomore campaign. And I started getting offers my sophomore year. And I was like, man, this, this is kind of fun. And so I just stuck with it. What was the biggest difference between the culture of baseball and the culture of football? I think it's got to be, I mean, it's got to be the relationships, not just at practice, but it was outside of practice or outside of the games. Like in baseball, you know, it's very individualistic in a lot of your stats. So a lot of people are very, to themselves, I guess when I was playing baseball, like they were like, hey, I got to get this scholarship. I got to hit dingers. I got to throw this yeah. guy out a second. And in football, it was like, hey, man, I, I need you to make this block or I'm going to get blown up. <laughs> like like we, we're calling, I mean, back in, back in high school, I mean, I was, it was a small school. It was a, a, a 2A school out of 8A, which is we go up to 8 in Florida. Yeah, right. So it's just a small Christian school. So, I mean, it was a lot of QB sweeps left and right. <laughs> Especially when you're a big kid like you were. Yeah, I mean, I was I was this tall, probably only 200 pounds though. Um, it's still big though. For for a two A. Hey, some of your linemen weren't weighing 200 pounds. If they were, they were. It was soaking wet. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so I'm like, hey, listen, I'm in the huddle. I'm like, listen, that guy's huge, and you got to hit him for me because I don't want to get hit by him. I want to run you by him. I don't want to get hit by him. That, that brings up a good point. Do you think that's the difference in culture in football is guys are whacking each other. They're hitting each other. Baseball, I mean, no one gets hit at all. Basketball, you kind of bump into each other, but it's a foul, right? Football, if you don't hit a guy clean and hard enough, you don't get to play. And, and that's, that's another thing I think that's different. What I love about football versus baseball. Like I said, baseball is very individualistic. If one person's having a bad game, that's his bad game. I could hit three home runs and you have three strikeouts and we still win the ball game. Yeah. But football, if you miss that block, I get blown up. <laughs> Make the wrong protection call. You look dumb on TV. Like, you know, so it's just, if 
I if I audible the wrong route, it's on all of us. Like it yeah. never works. So I, I a lot more preparation too. I think I believe. No, for sure. I mean, now in baseball, I've seen. I have a couple of friends that I still talk to that are now in in, in the MLB and stuff like that, and they say it, it's a lot different because you you watch pitchers, you like watch their film on their whole game, you see what they like to do in a two two count versus a one two count. And yes. But back in high school, you don't do that. You just show up to the field and hope you play good. And football, yeah. hope something good happens. But show up yeah, and hope football, something good happens today. Football definitely taught me how to prepare. Yeah. So, so you went from Orange Christian. Was it Orange Christian? Orangewood Christian. Orangewood Christian. And yep. then you and went then to I Winter Park. Up. Yep, exactly. My last year played Winter Park because a lot of the coaches, I mean, I remember the Ohio State recruiter coming down. And he's like, listen, I love the size. I love the arm. I love it all. I love the speed. It's just I need to I need to see you play against some different people and competition. And, and he was right. I mean, I was I was smoking dudes down at 2A. Yeah. So I was like, all right, if I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do it. Right. So I went all the way up to 8A and uh played Winter Park one year, had a great year, and then you know, battled through some injuries, but hold, yeah. hold, hold, hold up. let's stop there. What was the difference in the culture between uh Orangewood and Winter Park? Yeah, so Orangewood, I mean, it's just a Christian school and yeah. you know, got guys are guys are guys are mean, but they probably haven't been through a lot of what some of those public school kids that yeah. I play with have been. So it was it was definitely a But I mean just being at a Christian school doesn't mean they don't party and don't talk yeah, about no, no, for sure. But I mean but what you know, that I don't, football culture is still um you're you're the best at that. Was Winter Park the best when you got there? When I got there the year before they had made a couple runs or the years before they made a couple runs and the year after they went undefeated and, and won the whole thing. So, I mean, I, I got there when things were starting to heat up. Really competitive. Yeah. So, I mean, we, I mean, uh, what did a summer look like for you training? So that, that, that summer, I, when I left Orangewood Christian school, uh, I went and I was, you know, it was between Edgewater and Winter Park. Those were like the two big schools in Orlando. Okay. That kind of, I, and, you know, I had guys, I knew guys from Edgewater and I knew guys from Winter Park and they were both like, Hey, come, 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 come. They're come. recruiting you. Yeah. I mean, it was, it was, it was crazy. And I, I ended up picking Winter Park uh, and, you know, it was, it was kind of over from there. I went and saw the coach and he was like, we need a guy that can sling it. We got, we'll, we'll put weapons around you. We just need someone to, you know, get these rascals head on straight. <laughs> so were you in shotgun that whole time and, and just – so at Orangewood Christian, it was more pro. So I did a lot. I did a lot of under center single back stuff. And yep. It was fun. I that's I really enjoyed it. But when I went to the park, it was strictly shotgun. And so, did you play a lot of passing league games in the summer? A lot of seven on seven tournaments. A lot, yeah. yeah. And especially uh, at Orangewood, when I was trying, because when I went to Winter Park, I had already signed with South yeah. Dakota State. So I was kind of just playing to play, having fun. I got you. But my sophomore and junior year, I definitely, definitely got a – So, did home. anybody come at you – like, you had already committed to South Dakota State. Did anybody come at you, like, from wherever and say, hey, man, you need to come? And, and you were like, ah, dang it. Or... So, we, we, we missed a big part of the Orangewood. But uh, – so, Orangewood, my – going into my junior year, the spring game, the week before, I mean – I had Arizona, Michigan State, Purdue, uh, you know, before Jimbo, before he left FSU, was coming to the game. Like, I had a lot of big schools coming to see me. And I, my coach was like, hey, you're probably going to do a drive on offense and maybe two You moved your camera. I can only see you from, like, here. Oh, sorry. sorry. <laughs> there you go. Uh, yeah, good. Going into the game, he's like – or the week going into the game, he was like, hey, you're going to do one or two drives on offense and maybe a drive or two on defense because I played – at the small school, you play both sides. Yeah. And so I was like, all right, cool, that, that's fine. But that Monday of the game is on Saturday. That Monday, I came down with mono. Oh, geez. And so that whole week of practice, and granted, in June in Florida, it's about – it doesn't go below 100. And if it is, oh. it doesn't feel like it. Yeah. I'm going through that whole week with mono. I take one rep, and you thought I just ran a 5K. And – so I'm struggling through the week. I'm struggling through the week day by day. I mean, I'm going to get IVs after practice. Before. I'm surprised they let you play with mono because you can get a blown up spleen or something crazy. 
So that we that won't was, go there. We won't go there. <laughs> yeah, that was the thing. I, I decided to play, and on the second play of defense, it was third down, it was third and two. Quarterback, they're trying to drop back, throw a quick slant. My my will, uh, he kind of sniffs it out, and so the quarterback rolls to the right. I'm coming to go get him, and I just get cracked right in my spleen. So I woke up on the ambulance. And oh man. Yeah. So I, I lost my spleen. I had to learn how to walk again and I lost all my offers. So oh my I, gosh. So I just went through a how long with that, that whole therapy of learning how to walk again and all that. So funny story. My, my mom is pretty, uh, she, her saying is if, if you're, unless you're bleeding out of your eyes, you're fine. Yeah. I mean, I, the, the, it took me about two months to get out of the hospital with all the complications and stuff like that. Um, but I mean, I think I got one day of rest and then the next day my coach showed up with a cane and said, Hey, let's walk around the block. And it was, I mean, I couldn't go up the stairs. I could barely stand in the shower. Like it, it was, it was rough, but I had a really good sport team. And I think, I think that's kind of where I met God that day. Like I was kind of doing my own thing and then boom, like I can tell you from now, nothing in my life has been the same ever since that hit. Really? You said yeah. you met God. Like, what? T- let's elaborate on that. Let's talk about that. Like, before, I mean, before I knew of God. I, yeah. I, um, well, you I, were at a Christian high school. Yeah. I mean, I had Bible class. I didn't, I didn't know how serious. Uh, what you was knew him, but you didn't need him. Yep. Exactly. I, I knew him, but I didn't need him at the time. And as soon as that happened, I was like, I need you. I can't do this. I can't do this anymore. Like I, it was fun while it lasted and I'm, I'm glad we had a good ride, but now I'm, 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 I understand now. That angel coach showed up with a cane in his hand and said, let's go for a walk. Yeah. Let's go for a walk. How so, was that walk? It was, I can remember we were walking down the street and I was like, I was like, coach, I'm, I'm exhausted. I mean, we've only taken 15 steps. <laughs> he's like, he's like, listen, I'm not leaving until you make it around this block. So we can do this all day. I cleared my schedule. And I was your head coach. Was that your head coach or assistant? No, he was, he was the offensive coordinator, but me and him still talk to this day, like a mentor, just like I got my corner. And, And so he, he, he really helped me through that. That is so cool. I mean, it's not cool. You got your spleen blown up and all that, but. No, but yeah, I mean, that, that's the thing with God is like every, everything that's ever happened. That's bad. I mean, he, he was always kind of there for me. He always had stuff waiting for me whenever I needed it or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. He puts you right exactly where he needs you to be to teach you what he needs you to learn so you can go help somebody else. I mean, yeah. When people saw me come back from that, I think, I think people were like, wow, I mean, he did that. Like, I mean, I, I just know I've, I've heard people come up to me before and say, Hey, like, I remember when that, that day it happened. I remember seeing you walk back to school and you were 140 pounds and, you, you looked like you just came out of an imprisonment camp in yeah. South of Mexico. And no one, because no one really knew, because I mean, at the time I was the only adolescent who had ever lived from it. So, like, the doctors were like, hey, we don't really know how your son's alive right now, but we're just going to monitor it and see what happens. So, like, every day, every day since that moment is just kind of extra at this point. Like I, I could, I don't know what, what's going to happen, when it's going to happen, when it's going to fail. I don't know. It's so, I mean, it's just miraculous. I know you got to be part of your own miracle, which you are and you have been, but that's just so cool. So you go, that happened at Orange Christian, right? Orangewood yeah. Christian. Mm-hmm. And so then you say, I'm going to transfer to Winter Park. And they had, were they were they all aware of you going through all that and everything? Yeah, pretty, pretty much all of Orlando, because in Orlando, if you're highly recruited, people kind of know who you are. Yeah, yeah. Just football guys, at least, because um, you're in the papers and on the yeah. news. So when they heard that, everyone kind of almost forgot, like, who I was. So that junior year, I had to come back and, like, hey, I'm still here. I'm still fighting on this. Like, I'm still here. And and I was reaching out to all the, the coaches that were recruiting me before, and they're like – Hey, we, we respect the hell out of you for what you're doing, but like we just we're not gonna go for it. We're, we're yeah. just too you know, un, uncertainties with you. And I was like, I, I understand, but 
I understand. I just I understand. I understand, I just, but I can do it. And I understand. Yeah, like I can do it, coach. You just got to give me a chance. But yeah, so none of them gave me a chance except for uh, South Dakota State and the recruiter that recruited me there. Uh, he actually played at Edgewater, which was the rival school. From okay. Oh, so that's. I, I think he kind of helped me out a little bit. So he takes you across a couple county lines and gets you up into South Dakota. I had no idea what I was in. <laughs> <laughs> a clue what I was in for. Well, there's some good things up there, though, man. There's some good hunting, pheasant hunting, and all that kind of stuff. If you're into it, it's probably a paradise. <laughs> me being a Florida boy going up to South Dakota, I think I showed up to the first because I graduated early. I did the where you skip your spring and you yeah. go play spring ball with them. Yeah. So I did. I show up to the first meeting. It's like January 10th Ooh. or something. And I show up in shorts and a T-shirt. Cause I didn't have any, like, I mean, I had I'm like, mom, I swear that's, I'm a, hey, that's a tough, tough transition. Dude. If you would have uh, got up there in the summer, you could have been like kind of gradually adjusted to that winter, but you got off the plane in shorts and t-shirt. Mm. Oh my gosh. I had, I mean, I had flip flops on and <laughs> the head coach or the coach that recruited me. And he, he called my mom that night and he was like, He's like, hey, do I need to buy some clothes for Ethan? Like, th- does he does he not know it's negative degrees outside? And she's like, we, we, tr- we tried to give him some clothes, but he said it wasn't working. Like, I guess so. It's I guess the winter clothes they make in Florida are not the same they make in South Dakota. <laughs> so I was like, Mom, I've got this huge. Hey, thank goodness for Amazon. Now you can get it wherever, right? <laughs> oh, I mean, but back then it was like, Mom, this puffer jacket isn't doing anything. I might as well get a t shirt. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that took cool. a, that took a while to get adjusted to. My first semester there was was rough. Did you meet some? Tell. Let's talk about that culture. So you get into that culture. That's college. That's your first real kind of uh, adventure in college, which is a little different, you know. Oh, I mean, like I said, I had no idea what I was in for. And I'm in South Dakota. I don't have any family in South Dakota. I don't nervous, know. scared, all of the above. I don't, I don't know how much I was nervous or scared because I just came from being the hot shot in high school. Yeah. So I thought I, I was probably high up on my horse at that time. Yeah. Uh, but it, it, I, I fell off very quickly. <laughs> I got Your it. horse froze. Yeah, my horse froze. I, I learned who the lifting coach was, and it was kind of over from there. Yeah. So, I mean, college. Get after you with those five or whatever, 6 a.m. workouts. And- oh, don't even get me started. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's but, what it's all about, man. You got to help somebody else that might get into that situation. My, my only thing is I love getting up in the morning because, I mean, I still get up in the morning early most days and, and work out because I just feel like, man, I just got a head start on everyone. Yeah. Uh, but I was like, Coach, we don't ever play football games at 6 a.m. I don't know why we're practicing at 6 a.m. <laughs> like, I understand some of these people have to just hit people, but I got to think, Coach, and the sun's not even up. <laughs> so... No, hey, but whatever, really good. whatever doesn't kill you makes you tougher, right? <laughs> oh, a hundred percent. I needed it. I was, I was too entitled at the time. I needed. Yeah, it. some of that's just a weeding out process, right? Oh, it is. It is for sure. And I, I saw, I saw the weeds get thrown out. There was a couple of guys that I was close to that I've seen get kind of cut. Yeah. Quickly. So, what was that culture like? I mean, was there a bunch of dope smokers? Were there guys from Texas and Florida, and, uh, and was it all over the place or? What was it a like? lot of a lot of a lot of Wisconsin, Minnesota, Nebraska, yeah, North North Midwest. Area. Yep, that was that was their that was their pipeline. A lot of Iowa guys, corn fed boys. Yeah, oh, corn fed. I mean, when you when you see some of those other linemen, I'm like, I'm I'm thinking I'm tall. I'm like, holy crap! You got to look east and west just to see the outside of these guys. Yeah. Um, but the cult the culture was. was it was more serious, and I don't think I was in that mindset yet. Like yeah. I don't think it clicked in my brain how serious this was. Because um, I mean, all the wall ball, right? This is like this is all ball now. Like this isn't just hey, you come in on Saturdays after a game, you watch about thirty minutes of film. No, we're in there all day on Sunday. Like it just it was it was a huge shock to me, and not that my high school didn't prepare me, but I'd moved so many times schools that like. I was very in and out. I was very, hey, plug and play, get out. Yeah. And so when I got to South Dakota, I was like, okay, I'm here for the next four to five years. Yeah. In, in my head. And so 
yeah, I think at the time the seniors there, like Dallas Goddard, he's tied in for the Eagles now. So that there were some there were some studs on that team that I, that really helped me because me being when I was growing up, I, I was usually bigger than everyone, so I yeah. was kind of laid up at camps or. Uh, when I was playing travel ball at 15, I was playing on the 18. So I've always kind of been cool with the older guys. Yeah. Like when I was a freshman, I was hanging out with seniors and stuff like that. Just being a quarterback, that's just kind of how it is. Um, but the culture was different. It was, it was all ball now. And I think that's what I really learned. Like, hey, if I'm going to do this, I got to do this. Like, there's no, there's no half ass in this anymore. Yeah. Were you tapped into your faith still then, or were you like, I'm cool, I'm I'm good, or so I, now you're flying alone, you're flying solo. That you don't have any, uh, you don't have any uh, of your people up there yet. In no, it, it was it was very very challenging. I mean, I can remember, I can remember shoot praying at night, wondering if this even going through the ceiling. At this point, like, I mean, I, I was struggling. I was, I was. What did a my... prayer? I'm going to ask you a real private question. What did a prayer sound like? It was like, God, I'm all alone in this. And, and I, I know you're taking care of me because you've taken care of me before, but what do you got me doing? here? Like, <laughs> this doesn't look like you're taking care of me. What's going on? Like, I mean, I mean, it's like, I mean, the, my, my QB coach, we were getting into it. I mean, I just, there was so many things that were just going what it seemed like wrong. Right. Yeah. yeah. And I'm just like, God, I mean, and at that point I didn't understand suffering. I didn't understand, Hey, God uses a lot of those down times for your best times. And so like at that time I didn't understand. I was like, okay, God, you just got me through the spleen thing. Yeah. You got me to college. You're still doing like what I'm praying for. I know that but it's just like, this is a mess. Like, how did I get myself here? And so that was, that was a lot of the prayers. And luckily I had a, a you didn't think it was a mistake. You thought it was a mistake. Yeah, no, I was like, coach, I, I mean, I, I was like, God, I understand we've been through a lot, but this, this is up there. <laughs> this is up there. So yeah, we had a, we had a running back coach there, coach Johnson, who actually played at Oklahoma state and ended up coaching and recruiting my last year at Oklahoma State. So he was he was a really good mentor to me, but he would take a couple of us because I couldn't find a church there. Mm. Like all churches, it was, I mean, very old school. Like yeah, thought we were going to church in 1960 still. Like yeah, I, right. I don't right. know what that is, but like I just couldn't find a church that was that was getting me what I needed. Yeah. And so he would take a few of us, uh, me and a couple of my roommates in the dorms, and we'd go up on a free day before meetings and just we would watch a random TD Jakes or a random YouTube pastor and just talk about it. I so love I think, that coach. I love that coach. No, he, 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 God was definitely working through him because that's kind of what saved me because it ended up, I had done a spring there. I had redshirted and then I did one more spring there. And then after the end of that spring, I was just in such a bad place. Like my health wasn't good. I wasn't taking care of myself. I was being a typical freshman college quarterback hot shot on the streets. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm doing everything a college quarterback shouldn't do basically. (laughs) Like, I mean, I was learning what not to do uh, if I wanted to be successful there. Um, And after the second spring game, there had been rumors that a couple guys were getting cut due to due to due to budget or, or yeah. what the reason was, and I was like, "No way, they're cutting a QB. There's only five of us. There's no like it's going to be a wide receiver, a, a DN, or like a D lineman or something like that, or a corner." Yeah. yeah. So spring game, family comes up. Uh, we have exit meetings that next, uh, not Sunday. But that next week, because that's the last week of school, it's finals week. And I, my exit meetings were on Monday because yeah. I, I, I wanted to get out of there as quick as possible, right? Yeah. I'm go back to Florida. I'm a coach. I just seen coach that recruited me, Coach Armheim. He was the wide receivers coach. He was like, hey, hey, you had a great spring. I, I like what you're doing. Like you could tell you're progressing football wise. I go to my quarterback coach. Uh, he's like, hey, you know, just, just need to work on the grades, but, but you're getting better in football. Like you just need to get your grades up a little more. I was like, okay, like two for two, right? 
I go in to see the head coach, Coach Stig, and he said, listen, this isn't ever easy for me. And I'm thinking, no way. No way. But before I say it, the night before, the day before that Sunday, I met with Coach Johnson and a couple of guys, and we were watching the TD Jakes thing. And it was about, he was saying, whatever you want to ask God, whatever, whatever's just bottom, just write it on a sticky note, put it on your desk, and just leave it. Don't think about it. Just let God handle it. And so I, that morning, Monday morning, I watched the TDJ. I woke up, watched that video again, and I wrote, God, should I stay or should I go? Because at the time, I was like, I'm not having fun. This is terrible. I need to transfer. Like, this is horrible. I, I can't be here anymore. And uh, that I put it on my desk, went to Stig. Stig told me, hey, we're going to have to cut you. You got to be out by Friday. And I was just like, the whole time, I swear I didn't even hear what he said. I, it was like God was talking, the Holy Spirit was talking to me. He's like, you asked me, and I told you. And I was just like, okay. So I think I met God that day when I got my spleen taken out. And then I realized that this is not about me that day when I got cut. So I was like, okay, God. You he got reintroduced me. himself to you. You got my attention now. I'm So that, that day I got cut and... The next couple of months, I was searching for a home. Didn't even so you know. go, you go back to Florida. You get cut from there, and you get back to Florida. And and what are you doing now? You're like, I, so, I still want to play, I, right? Yeah, no, I'm still want to play. I'm, I'm calling all my old coaches. I know I'm like, hey, you know, does anyone have a spot? Any, anyone, anything? I mean, half scholarships. I'm, I'm taking anything. And I went up to Nashville to see Matt and my mom for a couple of weeks. And I mean, they'll tell you if you ever ask them, it was, those two months when I didn't know what was going to happen, I was not myself. I mean, I, I, was, I was like, man, I got to go back to school now as a regular student. Like, I got I to gotta get a job. Like, oh, my goodness. Like, I can't believe I just messed myself up at South Coast. I'm thinking I just screwed the whole operation up. Yeah. I'm like, I just blew it. And so I guess my, uh, my dad, one of his secretaries, his son played at city college out in San Francisco. Ooh, that's like, a whole nother. <laughs> so I come back to South Coast state. He's like, listen, if you're, if your son's a quarterback, you got to go out there. I mean, they breed, they're like quarterback gurus. They breed quarterbacks out there. That's by and the like, way, for all you listeners, that's OJ Simpson school. That's OJ he Simpson. went to junior college. Yep. Along um, with a million other great players. I mean, you should see when I got there, there's a wall they show you. It's just all the players that have gone to the NFL. And yeah, I've recruited that school. Yeah, it, 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 it's, it's money out there. Um, but so I'm, I'm there, and I get on the phone with, with Coach Collins, who's the head coach there, and he's like, yeah, man, it, it, I, I've seen your tape. You'll go power five. Just come out here. And so I'm like, all right. I, and, I mean, I've gotten offers from FCS schools and, and all this other stuff, same level. And I don't know what it was. I was just like, I think that's what I need to do. Like, I, I had no idea that what it was going to turn out to be. So I head out to San Fran, and now I'm in Cali. And luckily, I have an uncle out there. So at least I have someone. This time. Where is he living? He lives in Walnut Creek, which okay, is across. Okay, yeah. The, it's right across the yeah. bay, yeah. Yep. So at least I have one person now. That yeah. I, <laughs> I got one ally in town. Yeah. So what was the culture difference between uh, South Dakota State and San Francisco City College? So City College is where you really find out if you love football. (laughs) Why? I know why. Tell everybody else why. Because if you don't love football, it is going to be a nightmare every day. I mean, the things you have to do to be able to play football and Juco out there are I mean, I don't, I don't really wish them on anyone. That's a life. <laughs> Just give us a couple examples. I mean, I remember a running back that I lived with. Is everybody with. lifting weights? I have a nicer home gym here. <laughs> uh, there, no, no it, it, it was very small. Nothing. I'm sorry, I, I cut you off on that, on that roommate or that running back. Go ahead. Uh, so I, when I first got there, Coach Collins had put me with one of our running backs who was a stud. I ended up transferring a uh, scholarship in the Cal and, you know, running really good there. And I think he's, he's signed somewhere trying to get picked up, whatever. He, uh, he was, he was, he would go to, he would go to school and then we'd have meetings and then we'd have practice 
And then he'd go work his night job till 4 a.m. to pay the rent. And then he would come home about 5, 5.30, and he would sleep from 5.30 to about 9.30. And then we, me and him both had class at 10, and we would go, we had the second class, and we would go to class at 10, and then we were in it. And he was a running back. Like, I mean, he was running every day hard. And yeah. in Juke, I mean, there's not a lot of tag-offs and wraps. No. Wrap up. It, it's, it's full go. Most he practice. wanted it. He wanted it. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing is you realize if you want it. Like, yeah. If you don't, you will get chewed up and spit out, and especially out in California. I mean, there's no help out there. It's all you. Well, and there's a billion – not a billion. There's a billion and one distractions. I mean, you think you had distractions at South Dakota State as a freshman quarterback. You go out there to San Francisco, I mean, <laughs> come on. I, I, I've seen some things there that I've never seen in my life anywhere. Like, I mean, I went – I went to the Pride Festival one year. That says enough. Like it, it's it's wild down there. Like it, oh it's man, great city. I love the city. I love the food there. The like just the atmosphere, the hills, like the bridges. It's really cool. But it's, it's you better know who you are. Yeah, you better. You're, if you don't, you're gonna figure it out very quickly. <laughs> so did y'all have a good year? Yeah. So. Uh, I actually was the backup my redshirt freshman year, um, and I, I'd gotten in a few cleanup minutes and stuff like that. Uh, the guy who was the first string, he was there the year before, and that's just kind of how they were doing it. You were the backup the first year and you played the next year. Yeah, right. So it was kind of a well-oiled machine, and he ended up scholarship in the cow uh, too. So then first year, learning learning the, the air raid, run and shoot, all that fun stuff out there. Yeah. And I mean, we're, we're passing the ball 45 times a game. I oh, mean, yeah. I mean, it's got some freaks right playing receiver. And... Oh, I mean, these guys, I'm like, I, I mean, I would go up to some of these, our, our cats and I'd be like, dude, how did you not get a scholarship somewhere? Like, you're good enough. Like, you, you can make all the plays. And he's like, and usually it was grades or knuckleheads. Girl. Yeah. I mean, that, that was the best part of Chufo. And I think that's where I really matured as a quarterback. So I was like, these kids are great. I mean, they, they're really good football players. It just looks like they've had no guidance at all. Yeah. And, and you know, not, not that I'm one to guide someone, but <laughs> you know, I, I, I just, I feel like a lot of guys when I was leaving really were like, Hey man, like I appreciate you, what you did, you know, showing your faith. Cause I mean, when I went in that locker room, I don't think a soul in there knew who God was. And um, I mean, I, I'm in there. I'm, I'm giving out devotion books to people. I mean, like, really awesome. I, just think, I think I learned I don't have to be afraid of my relationship with Christ anymore. Like, if I'm not afraid in that locker room, I don't have to be afraid anywhere because I mean, <laughs> there are some dudes in there, and and out there, you know, all the the Samoan and the Usa oh, yeah. and the Cocos, and they're they're a whole other story. Yeah, yeah, they're, they're awesome. I mean. All those Juco guys, they're all... So did you start a little group of guys that you met with and... and... So I wasn't I wasn't there. I, personally, I wasn't strong enough in my faith to do yeah. that. But I, I think I was at least trying to live my own life. Like I was at least trying to... That people saw me read Bible before practice. People saw me posting stuff on social or Twitter, you know, Bible verse. Like yeah, right. people, I wasn't closed off about my faith at all at that point, but I don't think I was ready to teach anyone. Anything. Yeah. Yeah. So and it, it was really good. I think I just got over a lot of fears. I mean, you kind of, when you hit rock bottom, it's just like, okay, I can't go any further down. I don't think so. Let, let me just figure this up and try to do it right. There so, you go. There you go. I think it was like, I mean, I, I was up and then I was down all the way. It was like, okay, I've been up. And I, I don't like how I did it that much. And I've been down and I don't ever want to be there again. So let me do this right this time. And so that, that's kind of what I was like, I, yeah, God, I can't, I can't do this without you. I, I can't. Like every day I, I need you. Like I don't want to do this, this life without you anymore. Yeah. Or, that's super cool. So then you get another opportunity. Yep. Yeah, so, so I go through. I sit back up next year, uh, make it to the playoffs, losing the first round and a heartbreaker to San Mateo. Um, I actually only played half the game because I had a, a slip 
disc in my back Dang. from two games before, and I ended up playing the second half because the backup broke his ankle in the second quarter, so I had to go back in. And I mean, I'm I'm getting slammed, and <laughs> you, I don't know if you've been. I remember City College, but that turf is not soft. No, if they <laughs> probably have the same turf when I was recruiting that place. <laughs> I think I think they do. Oh man! It, I mean, so that that whole year, I mean, it was it was a struggle. I, I dislocated my knee the first game. What on, the what? On a QB sneak, just like Patrick Mahomes did two years ago on the goal line, same exact thing. Um, and then I missed the next game. Next game or two games later, playing good, I get the flu. I have a flu game. So I'm like, holy crap. But I'm still going, still playing decent, not as good as I want to, but I'm still, I'm still fighting for you guys. Um, two games later, fracture all my jaw. <laughs> I can I can remember I, uh, some family members coming to see me. We were in the car. I'm like, Man, my jaw hurts. Like, I don't, this doesn't feel right. So I go, I go to my team doctor uh, the next the next Monday, and he's like, let me do some x-rays or whatever. And they're like, there's just cracks all down my jaw. And they're like, listen, we're going to have to wire you up. And I said, listen, that's not going to work. <laughs> like, that's just not going to work. I got a game next week. That's not going to work. Yeah, it's hard to call the play like that. Uh-huh. Yeah, no. So like, all right, the best that we can do is give you like a, the big mouthpieces. Cause I don't ever wear a mouthpiece. Cause I'm always talking. Yeah. So I had to wear a mouthpiece and I hadn't worn a mouthpiece since I played center. Take it in, put it out, take it in. <laughs> and it was like, so the rest of the thing, I had to put it in every time. And it just, so there was a lot of, a lot of things that could have made me quit. That could have made me just kind of roll over that season. So, yeah. And then we go in, we go into the off season and I don't really have any offers yet. You know, I, I don't, I mean, I think two, two months into that off season after, like, I mean, it's getting very close to signing day. Like yeah. very close. And I have no offers whatsoever. What are you and thinking? I'm thinking, man, I just. What I else do I got to do? I got a broken jaw. I don't have a spleen. I got. I mean, like. It, it, what, else, what else do a, I got to do? I mean, like, I'm like, I get it. I didn't have the best stats, but I mean, man, I showed a lot of heart. I finished that whole season out. And I feel like in the NFL and college, I mean, that. They want. You, you can't make the club staying in the tub. Like, That's right. That's right. I'm out there. I'm. I'm, 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 I got a broken jaw, but I'm still calling protection calls with a mouthpiece in. It's like, so I, I felt like I was doing enough and I just, and I wasn't not trusting God. I was just like, man, this, you sure do like to, to wait to the last minute, don't you? <laughs> so I had actually, and I mean, at that time. I feel like I, Moses standing at the Red Sea, looking back at that army going, oh. Like, oh all right. <laughs> So I think it was two weeks before signing day, which was February 7th that year. Um, I had gotten a call from Terrence Knightley, used to be a, a D tackle for the Broncos when they won it with Peyton and stuff like that. He's, yeah. coaching, he's coaching up at Wagner now up in Staten Island. And he had called me and they're like, hey, you know, we like you. We want to offer you. We need a quarterback. Like we just went 0 12. Like we need someone to turn this ship around. Yeah. Like, coach, I'm your guy. Like, I don't care about anything. I just want you've to already been South Dakota, San Francisco, here and there. Well, I'm thinking, I'm like, that just kind of completes it. I went to the Midwest. I went way out West. Now I'm going Northeast and I'm, you know, I'm from the Southeast. So I figured I'd hit all the corners. There you go. But so I'm actually scheduled to go to a visit that weekend. The head coach calls me and says, Hey, uh, we got to cancel. Well, we're going to move it to next weekend because whatever reason. So that next day, Coach Berte from Oklahoma State, who was with the Redskins, with Haskins, who just left, and now he's the first year at Oklahoma State, he says, hey, out of all the JUCO guys I've seen, because we want to bring in a JUCO guy, you got the best tape by far. And so I'm like, shoot, you can say that again. <laughs> he said, what? <laughs> yeah, hold on. And so – that that next week they're like, yeah, we, we wanna, I wanna, I wanna, you know, wanna talk to you a little bit and, and get to know you and stuff like that. See, see if that that works out. And then throughout the next week, I mean, I I was up there that weekend and I, I had to call Wagner and I was like, listen, 
I probably would have committed if you would have just kept the visit on and Oklahoma State would have never happened. And and I told him that I was going to do that. I couldn't come to the Wagner visit. And he's like, I understand. So and and that's how that happened. And I think that neck that summer I showed up and I showed up and I think the first night I was there, I went out with uh, one of my buddies that I went on the recruiting trip. He was my host or something. Host, yeah, whatever they call yeah. that. And that night got COVID. Oh, that was- come on, man. So I mean, I showed up on say I'm I'm on top of the world. I'm like, God, you just did it all that. I went through it just for this. I'm so thankful. First day, COVID. So the first two weeks, I'm I'm missing workouts. I'm thinking I'm falling behind. Yeah. Yeah. When I got there, I mean, this is Oklahoma State. Let me tell you, it's nothing like JUCO, nothing like South Dakota State. I mean, it is the big leagues. So I mean, when I when I got there, I was, I think, from South. You thought, you thought going from high school to South Dakota State, you were like, whoa, and then you went out to San Francisco, and you're like, what the what? And then you yeah. get to Oklahoma State, and you're like, wow. Yeah, I was like, okay, this is the real deal here. Like, I'm here. Like now it's time to go. So yeah, yeah I mean, I go to Oklahoma State and the culture there is that's where I learned the business side of football. And you I know what? Know. In my eyes, these are just my eyes, and they're very biased. There's nothing like I told Matt this. There is nothing like that kind of a culture and that kind of business where you're just competing and you got a chance to go play and win the national championship, and everybody is like. Let's go get this, you know. Yeah, I mean, it, it is it is serious. Like I thought, South Coast State was all ball. No, Oklahoma State, that's all ball. I mean, <laughs> so tell everybody the difference because I know the difference. So yeah, South Coast State. I mean, we. So once you get to college, every college in the NFL, it's pretty much practices and schedules and meetings. It's kind of all the same. Yeah, like everyone does the same type of routine. But at Oklahoma State, I realized it, all these guys are good. All these guys are studs. Like, I mean, studs. And I can't just do what they ask me anymore. Like, I can't just go in for the required two hours of meetings and required two hours of practice and the required one hour lift. I got to do way more. Yeah, the minimum's like, not enough. Minimum is not enough anymore. And, and that's... That's where I, I mean, I was learning all these skills, but then it was like, okay, now I have to put them into play. The preparation I learned at South Coast State, the the heart behind it at City College, like putting those two together. I mean, you got a if you got you got a pretty good recipe for success right there. Yeah. Um, and so that's what I was doing. I finally came back out of COVID protocol, and that was the other thing I didn't know I was getting myself into because at JUCO. I'm sure some JUCOs you lift a lot, but our our junior college we did not lift a lot. Um, we we did a lot of running, <laughs> out of condition. Running and running the streets. We had a campus run, and in San Francisco it's like this. Yeah, yeah. Trying to run up those hills after the fourth or fifth hill you've run up is you like I said you figure out if you love it or not. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I met Coach Glass, who was who's the weight coach, strength coach at a. At Oklahoma State, and he's trained a lot of big time players. I mean, he he was at Florida when they were making the run with Steve Spear. I mean, he's well known within the college community, and and I met him, and and he he put my ass in the gear real quick. That's right. Those football training coaches, those uh, strength coaches, they change a team quicker than anybody can imagine because you guys are with them all the time. You know? Oh, I mean, they they run the they run the workouts. I mean, any of the speed drills, you know, any agility stuff, any seven on seven. A lot of times, the coaches can't be out there enough. Yeah, season. yeah, they can't. Strength coaches are there, um, and they run our warm ups and all that. And and uh, Coach Glass is the, he, he's the assistant AD or something like that. So he's also very a part of decision making with Coach Gundy and stuff like that. So. Oh, yeah. He he was very he was very much a leader in the Oklahoma State football organization. So yeah, I met him and he was like, "Listen, if you want to play here, you got to you got to work your tail off because coming from JUCO, I'm sure you can sling it, but 
you're going to get smacked around one game. You're going to have broken everything. Man, you're playing against Baylor, Oklahoma. You know, and you're playing against the legit real deal. LSU. I mean, I mean, you're playing. You can make it through that. You can make it to wherever else you need to go or want to go. I mean, those those D linemen, they're they're right there. You can smell their breath. And they're oh, yeah. Big. Yeah. So yeah. Another I mean, reason why they keep you in the shotgun, just to keep you away, just a little bit. <laughs> just just a few more steps. That's all I need. Get it out quick. <laughs> Yeah, for sure. But you all had a great year. Oh, this, this past it, year. It was so the first year there was the COVID year. Yeah. That I was there and, and that was that was very I, th- I don't think anyone had a good time across any Yeah, it's hard. Yeah. It was it was really hard. No one really knew what they were doing. So that that was tough, but we ended up having a good year um and then that next this past year, I mean, it, it might be one of the greatest seasons I've ever been a part of, of any anyway. tell, tell everybody why. It was, so we had lost, we had a lot of superstars the year before, like, I mean, Chuba Hubbard, uh, Amen, all, all these really good guys that are kind of in the league right now. And it was like, we, I feel like we kind of relied on them a lot. And like you do, I mean, coach, you want to feed the superstars. Like yeah, absolutely. Superstars. Feed the beast. And, yeah, feed the beast. And so the next year, I think we didn't have as many superstars, but we had a lot of really good players, like really good guys. And I think that made the difference. I think, hey, we don't have the the Chuba Hubbards, the Tylen Wallaces to rely on this year. Everyone's got to make plays this year. And I think everyone kind of – that caused our team to come closer. Yeah. My first year, it was, it was very clicky in the locker room, very – Hey, you know, I don't really hang out with the DBs. I don't really hang out with the O linemen. You know, it was very like that. And then as my second year rolled around, we realized we we can't do this without each other. We kind of all need each other. And I think that second year, I mean, the locker room really came together. And and even the coaches, I think, with COVID and just all the social injustices that was happening at that time, it switched college football a little bit. Like. Before, I mean, it, it was all business and what the coach said is what, what happened or what yeah. the higher-ups said, that's what happened. And now, I mean, players are getting – now the NIL, especially players are getting a say. Players are getting to talk to coaches on a real level. And I think that's what made all the difference because the coaches, like, we had to explain to the coaches, like, we love football. We want to play hard for you. Uh, you know, yeah, it's got to work together. We all got to work together to make this happen. I think that's what that team did, and it it was awesome. I mean, it was so many things that changed from COVID year to that next year. I mean, guys that you think would never hang out, you see them at at Fuzzies on on Washington, or or, you know, you see them at in in the at the gas station, you know, filling up their trucks next to each other, or whatever it may be. And I just think that was so awesome because when I got there, I was like, wow, this is this is. This is awesome, but it feels so businessy. It feels so not – it doesn't feel like a locker room. Anymore. Yeah, yeah. It didn't feel like we were just there to play football anymore and have fun. Like, yeah. it was great. everyone was trying to get out and get to the league and make their plays and stuff like that. But that second year, I mean, with the guys we had and the success we were having, and that coaching staff was amazing. I mean, the plan – some of the plans that came up – I mean, I would go in to Coach Dunn, our OC's office – probably every other week and be like, coach, that this plan is solid. Like this is some, one of the, some of the best stuff you've come up with. And I mean, it was just, we kind of took it back to the basics. We went simple. I mean, in 2011, if you watch that film of Brandon Whedon and Justin Blackman, they weren't doing anything crazy. Yeah. They were just throwing hitches and bubbles and inside zone. And, you know, it, it was really simple. We drafted Brandon Whedon when I was at the Browns, man, that dude. Whew. Sling it. I've met him a couple times. He would come in and sit. He's a big dude, too. Huge, huge dude. Yeah, he, he was a really, really cool dude. And he actually would come to our meetings and, and teach us a lot of, like, just little tips and stuff. Yeah. Like, hey, you know, on this three cut uh, to the right, 10 yard out to the right, you know, you're, you can, you got the arm strength, but if you just open your foot up a little more, it'd be a lot easier. And, like, just little things like that, he would help us with. And, and it, it was he was a really cool dude to be around. Yeah, that's super cool. So you still have another year. 
so I still have another year. Yes, sir. I'm, I'm training still, still throwing. You know, Are you good? Months. Yep. So I've yeah. been training every day in, in the weight room, throwing a couple of times a month just to keep the arm live and just yeah. kind of keep the options open. Yeah. And you're in the transfer portal and you're kind of weighing your options there and just kind of still talking to people and seeing what's up. Yeah. So I'm just, I'm really, I've got, a, I've got a few leads here and there, but uh, I really just, I've kind of entrusted God like, Hey, just like I thought I didn't have a place to go this time before. And you put me at Oklahoma state. Like I, I'm a believer. You, you do what you need to do. I'm going to trust it. Yeah. So I've had I'm going to be a different guy because of it, even more so than when you took me on that first journey and the second journey and this other. Oh journey. yeah. A hundred percent. And that's the thing. I, I think when it talks about so much suffering in the Bible is like, yeah, I mean, it, it sucks a lot of times when you're going through it, but after, I mean, if, if you're not better, your trust in God is better. Yeah. Like, Hey God, I, I've seen you get me through a situation just like this. So yeah. I know you can do it. And so I think that that has given me a lot of, a lot of hope and peace about this. So I know if I can just do my part and train and stay ready for the opportunity, if he wants it, he'll give it to me. Yeah. Knowing eyes see more and your eyes have seen a lot. And so I can see you going into a place and just being like, fellas, you know what we got to do? This is what we got to do. And that's the best part is I'm just seeing so many ball, so much ball and learning so many different offenses and, and meeting all different types of players, all different types of backgrounds where they come from, you know, their situation and their struggles. I feel like, like you said, I mean, at this point, very plug and play. <laughs> Well, I'll tell you what, man, you've been through a lot. What a what a journey. What an incredible journey. Hey, this show's called Another Rep. What's another rep mean to you? I ask everybody this. I think I think another rep to me is is why not? Why not go another rep? Why not? Like who's who's telling you you're gonna wake up tomorrow? Honestly. Yeah. So you might as well do another rep. Like that, that's right. Yeah. I love that. Well you might as well just go for it. Like that just another rep. What's another rep going to hurt? It's not going to hurt anything. Yeah, exactly. I think another rep, there's actually my uncle, when I heard another rep, when I heard that you had called your podcast another rep, um, my uncle who played at Florida, his roommate was a shortstop. And after every practice, he, he called a 200. And he'd take 200 more ground balls what? after every practice. And I, I've ne- I'll never forget that. Like, just another rep. He's like, I got 200 ball- ground balls better than the next shortstop. That's right. And then that adds up during the week. Now you got a thousand if you do it every. You, know, you, you think about you think about the the. Did you see the Michael Jordan documentary? I saw parts of it. I didn't see the whole thing, but yeah. So he his his whole and and co- the the Mamba mentality with Kobe is like, hey, if I'm putting in work every day for a year, I'm already ahead of you. Now, if I do that for five years, there's no way you could ever catch up to me. Even if you did work like me every day, you can never catch up. To me. So, like, just another rep is so crucial. I mean, you look at all the best athletes. They take that ideal and they. Yeah, and I love I love that. I love that. The, um, the thing I miss most about not coaching or not even, you know, not playing, not coaching is the locker room. I know I miss the games. I miss all that stuff, but the locker room, what do you think about that? I actually just wrote a paper on it for school. Did you really? Yeah. I was like, if you ask anyone that's played football or most sports, yeah, you remember some games and you remember some really cool plays, but it's the, it's the people. It's, it's the relationships you make. That's I, when I when I hit those guys at Oklahoma State, I'm not talking about man. Remember when we beat Oklahoma? I'm like, hey, how you doing, man? I miss you. Like, remember that time we were, you know, yeah. out fuzzies slamming margaritas or whatever the case may be. You know, like yeah. that's what I remember. Like, so I, I love the locker room. It's, it's my is my favorite part of it. Just with the guys. Think of what out. the locker room was at San Francisco State. So the locker room at City College was. It was it was very small. It was very middle school. Not even talking about the physical building part of it, because I know what that was like, but just the guys from where all they came from. And I mean it, it was just like every it was very it was very 
I don't know if this is the right word, but very hostile. Like just guys, they just were all for themselves. I mean, they've been fighting their whole lives just on their own, just trying to figure it out, trying to make a way that like maybe football, this football thing could work out. Yeah. And that, that was the best part is like, even those those guys were going through struggles and I knew some of them, but I'm also very blessed. And, you know, I had family that was able to help and stuff like that when I was out there, but I just, I think my empathy grew. I think I, I just realized that, you know, not everyone lives the same, you know, not everyone that's coming to practice had 30 minutes to an hour to stretch and prepare and get warmed up and all that. And, you know, when I was going to practice or in the locker rooms, if, if guys had a bad practice or a bad game, I'm like, listen, I can't just jump down their throat every time. Yeah. I had to learn, like, these guys are going through so much more than just football. Some guys had to work all night, come home, and try and catch three hours of sleep because they were, you know. Yeah, I mean, that, and I think that's what made me such – I mean, all throughout this time, I, I think that's what God's been trying to make me as a, as a better leader. Like, like, just being a QB, you naturally have to be a leader, like, whether you want to or not. Yeah. Uh, guys look to you. And so I think just learning just – city college guys that type of struggle south dakota guys that type of life you know oklahoma guys a lot of them are from texas and stuff like that like that type of life it's just you learn how to help and deal with different situations because you've seen them before you know yeah. you know hey I, I there was a guy at oklahoma state that was kind of going through the same thing i knew a guy at south dakota state was going through and i was just like okay i know what i wish i would have said then i'm gonna go say it now very cool. Yeah, Very cool. it's just it's been really awesome. All the people I've met, it, it's been a crazy journey, and I wouldn't trade for anything. But the Pete, like I said, all the guys I've met, coaches, teammates, I mean, it's awesome. There, well, this will be my last question for you. What makes a tough two? Really, it's two pointed question. What makes a tough quarterback, and what makes a tough quarterback over just a tough football player? What's the difference? I think. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna answer them backwards. So what makes a tough football player versus a tough quarterback is quarterback, Mike Gundy's big thing is quarterback got to be the toughest guy on the field. If you're going to get it, you don't know where it's coming from, you got to get right back up. And, and he soon, played it, so he knows it too. Yeah, you know, oh, he knows. And, and he would look us all dead in the eyes in the pregame, all the quarterbacks, and be like, listen, you got to be tough, got to be tough. And that's one thing is you have to be tough, yes, but as a quarterback, you have to be tough and, and, and smart. Like if you get knocked off, you can't just push, push a D a DN back and like, get off me. Like you just, you can't do that. So many people are looking at you. You got to be tough, but you also have to be smart. You can't just fly off the handle. So I think, I think, yes, you have to be one of the toughest guys in the field, but you have to be very smart with it. You can't just come back on the sideline, dropping F bombs, telling your wide receivers, catch the ball. You guys suck. Like it's just, <laughs> They'll shut down. They'll be like, "Screw you, dude." <laughs> That's right. So you know, like, you ain't and, completing and, every pass either, bro. So uh. <laughs> yeah. So, so that's the thing is like, you, you got to be. T- I mean, once you get to that level of football, you'll realize if you don't have the toughness, you'll know day one. You you'll know. Go we'll say next. So yeah, I mean, I think everyone once you get past that first point, and then if you're if you're a QB or any any position in leadership, I think you just have to be smart. You can't fly off the handle like everyone else. You can't. You, do you realize how much tougher you are now than when you went to uh, when you first left high school and went up to South Dakota State? I'm talking mentally tough, not just physically tough. But yeah, mentally, I think just I had learned like like you said, I, I just can't do the first thing that pops in your head anymore. Like you can't just kind of live willy-nilly anymore like you got you got guys looking up to you you got you got I mean you're the quarterback if you're doing things wrong they're like oh he's doing it wrong I'll I'll do it wrong like you know I I can't I can't be out partying all night anymore I can't I can't I can't do it anymore I just yeah you You can show up you just can't show off yeah I mean if you if you show up especially as a quarterback and don't know what you're doing is very obvious yeah. Oh, yeah. As a DN and don't know what you're doing, let's make one guy miss and get to the quarterback. You know, <laughs> my cat. And I know it's yeah. very. I know it's way more interesting than that. Yeah. When you're a quarterback, this is what I I would tell my guys when I was coaching them. You want to be with your people. You know, like on a whatever night, Thursday night, they all go out and do whatever. 
you you can show up, but you can't show off there because on Saturday you have to show up and show off. Because if you don't, they'll go next. And everybody yeah. in the bleachers, everybody on TV, you realize when you went to Oklahoma State, you stepped onto the national stage. And yep. and everybody's eyes on you. You know, you never knew what a goldfish bowl felt like as much as when you were at Oklahoma State. And mm-hmm. then when you get an opportunity, if you ever do, to play in the NFL, it gets even tighter and more intense, which is so, so much more fun, too, I think, because – you know, yeah. if you don't love it, then it's just you go do something else. But if you love it, you excel in it. You know, that's why I love guys like Tom Brady, Drew Brees, Aaron Rodgers, Russell Wilson, Patrick Mahomes. They, you can see how they love it in their eyes and their demeanor. And they just, you know, they just can't wait to get that next rep. They just can't wait. Just get me in. You know, when Patrick Mahomes is on a roll and his offense is clicking like that and he's throwing it to, you know, Hill and those dudes, he's like, Give me another play. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> you know? yeah, he's giving him one of these. Yeah, he's dialed in, man. He is dialed in. So, hey, so great to talk with you. And uh, this has been easy. When you come to Nashville, let's get together. Easy. Yeah. I love having you on the show. Thanks for coming on another ref. And uh, we'll do this again. Perfect. Thanks, Coach. Ethan, my man, thanks so much for coming on another rep, man. Love your story. Wow crazy story crazy story hey if you like this show hit like hit subscribe share it with your people most of all let's keep repping let's go get another rep until then i'm gonna keep repping you keep repping i am out